Hello, my name is Callum Clark and welcome to my presentation on applying faster RCNN and mask RCNN on the Minapple Fruit Detection Challenge. This research is done in collaboration with Maastricht University at the Department of Data Science and Knowledge Engineering and was supervised by Assistant Professor Alexia Brasuli. So, why are we doing this? Well, in this thesis, we examine the problem of apple detection and localization as an object detection problem, and we apply this to the real-world data set MinApple, provided by the University of Minnesota's Horticultural Research Center. Now, by being able to detect the localized fruits from an image or a video stream, we can improve yield estimations, we can have all sorts of various automated picking machines, pruning systems, disease detection systems, all of which can help us decrease the amount of food waste in the production of these fruit and vegetables. In fact, the FAO predicts that between 37 and 55% of all fruit and vegetable waste happens in the production stage of the food production cycle. Now, as you can see, over the last 25 years or so, the amount of apples we produce globally has doubled, whereas the amount of land needed to produce these has decreased. And a lot of this can be put down to advances in technology in the agricultural se sector. So this is very important. Let's see what we can do to help push this technology forwards. So what we're going to do, we're going to train and compare faster RCNN and mask RCNN models with various residual network backbones and compare these to the current state of the art results on the MinApple data set provided both by the researchers who present us the data set as well as other researchers on their online Coda lab competition where you can benchmark your results against other research. Uh, as we mentioned before, these images are all taken from the University of Minnesota's Horticultural Research Center. Here's an example of the, an image from the data set with the bounding boxes around the, uh, the apples. Brief history of object detection. Obviously, we've got all the traditional detection methods followed up by the deep learning era. We're really focusing on the two-stage detectors as we're trying to go for increased accuracy rather than real-time detection. Although these are still pretty fast. So, state of the art, we've got the famous faster RCNN object detection system. And then the extension of this, mask RCNM, which allows us to do semantic segmentation and pixel by pixel classification. Now this becomes useful when we're looking at clusters of apples, etc. So previous data sets in object detection, we got the famous Pascal Voc, ImageNet, MS Cocoa, all of which are very rich, large, hand-labeled data sets with big benchmarking competitions. However, when we look at the context of in using these in tra models trained from these in the agricultural context, they're not going to perform very well as a lot of the images uh, have nothing to do with agriculture. As you can see here, these two images were taken from the MS Coco data set and they're labeled as apple images. However, one of them is just apples in the background of a, uh, an image in a stall and one's uh, some apples in a box of fruit and veg. Now, these are very useful for other areas of research, but when we're looking at agriculture, we want agricultural context in our images. So this moves us on to data sets that have tried to deal with this, specifically fruit detection data sets. Here are some previous research that has been done into it, as well as what the fruits they were detecting. Now the big thing here is that a lot of these images, a lot of these data sets comprise of cropped images with a low number of annotations per image. As well as this, the ground truth labels they provide us with are either bounding boxes, which is fine if you're just training a faster RCNN as that requires bounding boxes. However, if you want to do semantic segmentation and pixel by pixel classification, we need something a bit more than that. Now, we could do it with the circles that are provided. However, apples aren't generally perfect circles every time. They're slightly misshapen however they grow. So ideally, something with polygons is going to be far better for us to do semantic segmentation. As well as this, the way they collect the data is not just is it from a video stream or a camera. They use LiDAR, infrared. Now, these are, are great ways of sourcing extra information. However, these are all points of failure. When it comes to actually producing, say, an automated picking robot, you don't want to have to maintain a LiDAR and infrared detector as well as a camera. If we can reduce these points of failure, all the better, as long as the accuracy of the detection is still high. So yeah, some pre problems with these previous data sets. We've got the low number of instances per image. A lot of them are very low resolution cropped images. There's not a lot of variety in the species of apple. A lot of them are only a single species of apple or other fruits. And uh, there's a limited variation in illumination and occlusion levels. A lot of them are taken in lab specific environments where the lighting is all standardized. 
Now this obviously isn't very useful when we come to use it in the real world. So let's get on to MinApple. First of all, the annotations per image is massively increased to any of the previous ones. And this is due to the fact that the images are full resolution, hand labeled images of the entire apple trees. Here's some examples. As you can see, these are full apple trees with many apples on them. Each one of these is hand labeled so we know where they are with a polygon. Uh, now, as you can see, yeah, high resolution, they have a large variety of species, they have different levels of illumination, These, the images were taken at different times of the day, different times of the year, as well as many different sections of their orchard. So it's not just from one or two trees, it's from all over their orchard, which is a large area. As mentioned before, the previous ones use circles or bo uh, uh, bounding boxes as the ground truth labels, but they give us polygons, which allows us for specific semantic segmentation. Now, how do we work out if our model is better than anyone else's? Well, we have a MinApple there. The researchers have put a competition online where they provide us with some training images and ground truth masks. We then use these to uh, predict the, to detect and localize apples on the test images that they provide us. Then we upload the positions of these bounding boxes and our model's confidence level up here. And then they give us an evaluation. So, methods, what do we do? As mentioned before, we use the faster RCNN and mask RCNN with various residual, sorry, with various residual backbones. Residual networks allow us to train deeper networks without the vanishing gradient problem. Specifically, we used a 50 layer and a 101 layer residual ResNet backbone, as well as a 101 layer ResNext backbone. And these were all pre-trained on the image classification tasks, pre-trained by Facebook on the Detectron 2 system as mentioned here and here's some of the hardware software that we used for the experiments so the evaluation metrics we use the same evaluation metrics as the ms coco object detection competition which is the mean average precision over 10 thresholds of intersection over union there's just a brief description of it now here's some of our results so if you look at the different methods our faster rcnn mask rcnn and then the different backbones that these are that these are built with we can see that our mask rcnn with the resnext 101 has the highest average precision uh, once again the first table here is our results benchmarked against the results from the minapple research paper and then the second table is from the colder lab competition as of the 5th of november 2020 as you can see, Callum Clark, our model is still currently number one. Hopefully it's still there when this conference is published. Discussion. So, some methods. In the MinApple detection, in the MinApple paper, they state that the faster RCNN performs best. However, our mask RCNN outperforms both our faster RCNN and their faster RCNN. And I think this is due to the fact that the mask RCNN using the polygons and the semantic segmentation can deal with clusters of apples or overlapping apples or apples that are very close to each other without having an issue of overlapping bounding boxes. They only have the information that's necessary to them, nothing extra in that bounding box. Uh, now, maybe some issues with the data set. Now, as much as MinApple is a massive improvement on previous data sets, it's still a small sample of the total species of apples around the world. Apples are grown in every continent, in almost every country, and new varieties are constantly being bred. So if we want a general models that we can apply to agriculture globally, we really need to start encompassing all of these into future data sets. So in conclusion, our mask RCNN with the ResNex 101 backbone achieves state-of-the-art detection accuracy on the data set and is currently, as of the 5th of November 2011, 2020, is currently first place on the Colder Lab competition. If, thank you for listening and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate. Uh, yeah, here's just some, a little summary of it all for when it comes to questions. Thanks for listening.